Ah, Ben 10. A classic of Cartoon Network, and probably many people's introduction to sci-fi. A show about a boy finding a special watch from outer space, allowing them to turn into 10 alien superheroes and use it to fight off evil aliens or even enemies from Earth. It's just a fun and unique show, having a ton of imagination, creativity, and some great plots and episodes that's no wonder became such an iconic and successful brand for Cartoon Network. But at the same time, it's undeniably dumb. Now, I want to clarify immediately. Dumb does not mean bad. Not at all. In fact, it's one of the reasons why Ben 10 was so successful and fun. It didn't always take itself seriously. It had fun with the concept, making wacky villains and storylines that no doubt got a lot of kids invested in loving it. It's a thing that the series was constantly trying to emulate after. Without being dumb, Ben 10 wouldn't be nearly as good. You can argue every episode of Ben 10 is dumb to a degree. It's a silly premise, but that's what made people love it. But the thing I want to get into and maybe even appreciate. How dumb did Ben 10 Classic get? How silly, bonkers, and inane were some of the episodes, and how did it affect the show overall? The episodes that really stretch your suspense and a disbelief in the show and wonder what the staff were thinking when writing it. The episodes that make you question what you're watching, and of course, which can be considered the dumbest of the classic era. Let's find out. Again, I want to clarify, this is not the worst episodes of Ben 10, I already did a video on that. Though admittedly, a few are going to return the list because dumb sometimes does mean bad. But hey, even my most hated episode of Classic isn't on here because as bad as it was, it wasn't dumb. There's a few great episodes that I love on this list, so we're just gonna have fun here. I want to judge these with how much you have to suspend your disbelief from the premise of the show, how weird and convoluted the plot gets, and how much even the audience would realize the episode is, well, pretty dumb. Starting with number 10, Washington, B.C. Now, this is the thing I mean when I say that dumb does not equal bad. This is a great episode, and it was only the second released. The thing that puts it here is that it's pretty bonkers and wild. It almost feels it's kind of jarring in a way from the first pilot episode, which is really solid, introduced you to the series, while Ben fighting the Omnitrix and an alien warlord sending robots to try and kill him. And then suddenly having the next episode be about a random eccentric green guy making carnivorous mutant hamsters from pasta strainers and then trying to revive a T-Rex to get an award. Like, as much as, as fun as it is, there has to be a small part of your mind at the back of your head going, this is kinda dumb, when a mad scientist rides a T-Rex through a city like he's trying to recreate the Dresden Files. And it's a great episode, Animal's a fun yet eccentric villain, I love mutant he makes, and a lot of the action scenes are pretty good. And an important thing to know is that usually if an episode has tight writing and good atmosphere, they can make a dumb premise not feel so dumb, which the episode does super well. It's a wild premise that gets wacky, but it's still a great episode. It's why it's at the bottom here. I will turn Washington DC into Washington BC. Number nine, a small problem. Now, this is kind of the opposite of Washington BC, and it has a different type of dumb. There's fun dumb, which is wacky and creative, and the episode has fun with it and explores it, even if the premise is a lot to accept. And then there's the bland dumb, which is a bland idea that goes on too long, where the audience doesn't enjoy it, it's so convoluted it all is. And small problem is more of that. And effectively, while the premise is completely realistic in the show, it does drag on so much that it becomes tedious. Effectively, Ben gets stuck as gray matter for some unexplained reason, and gets captured by an eccentric scientist, and then has to repeatedly escape captivity for most of the episode. And it's not a wild premise, but it just becomes too repetitive and pointless, that you wonder why the show is bothering doing in the first place. It's also like an extended Tom and Jerry scene as a sci-fi show that takes you out of it. It becomes inane and dumb, and not in a good way. It does pick up a little bit when the Forever Knights get involved, and yeah, it does randomly introduce a secret society of Knights Templar, so it does get more inane even the plot's finally moving along and feels more Ben 10. Also, I get annoyed that Ben turns back to normal for like, no explained reason. So yeah, this episode is more the bad type of dumb where it just becomes so pointless and tedious that you just focus on how dumb the concept is and can't enjoy it too much. Ah, fresh air! This is so gross. Number 8. Don't drink the water. This episode in a nutshell. Baby. Now, this is another episode where the dumb is mostly how I know wild the idea is, but it still keeps focus with it. In St. Augustine, the trio find themselves with an ancient conquistador staying young by being the guardian of the fountain of youth. Yeah, that's real, and there's kind of no explanation for it. Welcome to Classic, and they need to stop the sorcerer Hex from using it to stay young and to get unlimited power. But the real draw is that Max gets splashed from it, turning him back to 10, and Ben does too, not only turning him 4, but also making his aliens younger too. And Terra herself is transforming more and more into Tammy Turner here. Where's Hex? So 
darn cool. Hey, who are you calling a baby? Oh, yeah? It's actually really fun to see a lot of the alien forms babyfied. It makes me wish we got to see more. Now, while it is a pretty silly concept, the episode doesn't really push the suspense of this belief and does pretty much have the entire plot revolve around only one aspect. That being the Fountain of Youth, being real, it's its magic that has been well established in the universe. At this point, it's not too hard to believe. The only real problem in the narrative is that Hector, for some reason, works in a fairground, maybe as his day job. But for literally no reason, he puts the youth water in the dunk tank. Why the hell would you do that? No, like really, why? He doesn't tell people it's out of order, but barely puts up a fight when Max insists he gets in. Like, come on, there has to be a reason. You may argue that they established that the youth water is temporary, and then Hector would need to keep drinking it. But that doesn't make sense he could just carry a water bottle, hell, a cooler. I mean, it's Florida in the summer, and no one's gonna think twice. Is this guy just out here drinking pool water in public? Yeah, that's the only main real plot contrivance. Everything else here is just par for the course. It's dumb, but it's not too dumb. It's a lot of fun. I don't see anything else that's really stupid. Oh, come on. Number seven, The Unnaturals. I'm sure some guys out are wondering, how would Ben 10 make a baseball episode? And I wonder why hell people are thinking that. But they did anyway. So yeah, we randomly get a cliche baseball episode where after randomly saving the Liberty Bell. No, like seriously, the inciting incident, some guys on a truck steal the Liberty Bell off screen and drive through another random fairground. Like, how the hell did they do that? That alone might make this list. But it turns out Ben's old baseball team could with his bullies are in town in a baseball game where up against suspiciously perfect players. Ben then somehow cheats using Accelerate at by far the fastest he's ever been where he runs so fast he literally is able to be invisible and freeze time. Like, holy crap, Ben has absolutely no reason to ever lose a fight again if he can do this. This is practically series breaking and it's barely acknowledged. But soon we find out that the Squire team are random robots and they seek to kidnap the president. Yes, really, we're doing this. For some reason, the president is out here supporting a Little League game. Was this a thing that happened in the 2000s? And after Ben's identity is not revealed by this come the hell on, have to save the president before he gets Robo replaced. And mainly this joke is great. Oh man, please tell me that was the fake president. But after an insanely forced mess about cheating, we found out that all of this, all of this, was the Forever Knights. Wow, that's stupid. I see Warner this wasn't even intended to be a Forever Knights story and they just threw them in at the end. And the Forever Knights are the Forever Idiots because out of all their plans, this might be the dumbest. Like, did Enoch really just- You get me the president! What? You want the president of the company? Of the United States of America! Like, the president doesn't have unlimited power, do you also have robots for the Supreme Court and Congress? Yeah, the episode's pretty dumb and not really a good way, but at least it's entertaining and not being get past the whole robot thing. We want a picture, not a Harry! Ben? Ben, what were you going to say? Ben? Ben? Number six, Midnight Madness. Now, this was one of the episodes that got into my worst list. And honestly, it's really for how bad the villain is. So Blumino has pretty much become a meme in the fan of how stupid he is. I mean, he's a badly dressed dwarf with the voice of an invader Zim. You can't exactly take him seriously. Behold, Sublimino! I am about to take you on a journey through that mysterious realm known as the Mind. The episode almost has a playoff his involvement as a twist, when it's insanely obvious. So the episode is how the Tennyson's get stuck in a mall as Ben inadvertently gets wrapped up in Sublimino's hypnotizing scheme, and then is the one who helps it to reach completion as he makes a giant wise of somehow hypnotize everyone else in the mall. Except Ben somehow is also going to somehow use that to take over the world. First them all, then all of America. There will be no stopping me. Yeah, this is just so inane. It doesn't help that like everything outside of the alien stuff is boring and repetitive. Where this is a lot of walking around and Ben trying not to fall asleep. So you're just continually waiting for stuff to happen. I hate mind control so much as a plot point. This kind of exemplifies how utterly convoluted it is. But subliminal backing it up makes it so much dumber. You can't take him seriously. He's so pathetic and shallow where he probably feels like a joke character. Yet the show takes him seriously as an antagonist here. All the preparations are complete. It's showtime! It's not taking cheek at all. These lucky Bridget Horvitz voice him, so this is kind of funny when he talks. And you, my lad! You! 
or an alien. He has virtually no plans. And his skin is kind of locked down to completions. I don't know how the hell he's going to get that stuff without Ben conveniently being under his command. And yet this guy got into the negative 10. What a joke. Bad enough you stick us with the amazing Mr. Nerd here. Yeah, this episode is pretty dumb, but not in a good way. Oh, well, who cares as long as you do what I say. Number five, ready to rumble. Now, this episode doesn't have anything too out there, but it's just that the plot is barely held together and feels so mismatched that you question what you're watching so often. So the inciting incident already doesn't make sense. Ben accidentally breaks Gwen's laptop and needs to fix it. And it doesn't acknowledge that all that he has great matter and upgrade could fix it in literally a millisecond. But it can acknowledge it since there wouldn't be an episode. But I wonder if they could have made some other reason that literally everyone in the audience doesn't question it. So Ben to get the money enters the mutant wrestling tournament as forums, which admittedly is a pretty fun idea, as he easily makes his way up having to fight more mutants. It's so weird how the series randomly has unexplained mutants running around like, what gives? Is this some X-Men crap going on in the background? So it's a fight against this gator boy and porcupine dude who are also brothers. Yes, just go with it. But then the episode randomly changes as it turns out that two mutants are trying to get money to save their mom from random gangsters. Here's mama! That's your mom? The folks say we take after our pa. Yes, this episode just throws it at you. It makes it hard to really focus and care about the plot when everything's so flimsily justified and introduced, we just notice how dumb it all is when put together. But if we can see Ditto again, I need some raw pulse and Animaniacs energy. Who needs four arms? You can have eight of them! As they sort of beat one slightly large guy. After all of that, the episode literally throws in a farm is being closed down plot at the end, so Ben gives it up to the mutants as it turns out that Gwen's laptop wasn't broken, it just needed an ID stick. Which is insanely stupid because if you lose it, you lose your laptop. Freaking dweeb. So really all this was kind of pointless. Yeah, this episode maybe has the loosest plot of every episode in Classic where it feels like they just threw everything they can at the narrative and just loosely fit them together. So it's hard not to feel like the entire thing was a dumb waste of time. But at least it's a little fun. It's a nice pathos, so it's not all bad. You want to see what's really bad? Look how the reboot literally ripped out the exact episode but that make it as dumb as possible. I had to make friends with a porcupine. Number four, Super Alien Hero Buddy Adventures. Now, I might be a little biased since I genuinely hate this episode, but I think that was one of the dumbest and name plots in not in a good way. The plot is that Ben is getting ripped off as they coincidentally find themselves in the studio. Now, this could be pretty fun if it was more of a meta commentary, but the episode can't even focus on that. Ben confronts Tim Dean, the guy who made the ripoff, but just gets ignored. The episode then pretty much ignores that, and then it goes to Ben trying to help out his childhood hero, Kangaroo Commando, who's only introduced in this episode, and they just ignore the plot they set up again. Why is this an episode? Like, seriously, who asked for Ben 10 copyright wars? This doesn't take advantage of the show at all, and other series at least of the concept that made it work so much better. To me, it's just so boring, you can't help but notice how stupid and name the plot is. Then out of nowhere just reveals that Kangaroo Command had a twin brother this whole time? You know he's you because he has a mustache. And he was behind everything he needed for revenge for Tim Dean stealing his idea and his twin getting the credit. And it's so stupid. Oh my god, he's killing them for this! And the episode doesn't even have the courtesy to finish its conflict. It literally just stops and nothing was accomplished. This episode is just so dumb. The concept is done. There's a huge and name. The plot's barely actually a plot, so it goes into straight up bad territory. Sorry that's become less why this episode is dumb and more why I freaking hate it, but it is what it is. Can't anybody come up with anything original in Hollywood? Oh, they do. People just don't actually support them and go and draw to see sequels despite complaining that they want original products instead. Oh yeah, I'm doing another video right now. What will you have after 500 years? Number three, game over. This is the prime example of how a dumb episode doesn't mean a bad episode. It's literally my favorite episode in the franchise. This is how you do a dumb episode right. Ben 10 doing a getting trapped in a video game story feels so weird, but they did it great. Due to an unexplained lightning strike which pop up tied to Dr. Victor's teleportation experiment, they're trapped in Ben Suma Slimer's game, which is so cool to finally get to see for yourself the franchise Ben's obsessed with. It makes it work so much better than just introducing a new concept, helping it has its fantastic steampunk Japanese aesthetic that is so cool and utterly drenched in. This episode is a dumb idea that honestly shouldn't be in Ben 10, but they make it work and they go all the way with it. It's even when we have to pair up with the games here at the start of the villain from Saw becoming real. Now, I love how they use video game mechanics as great ways, like Ben having to unlock his transformations like a video game. And it's so cool, especially how Upgrade is pretty much the god of this world and you need to get him to escape. 
It uses every video game concept to playing with lives, boss battles, power-ups, equitable weapons, enemy encounters, shortcuts. It's just so good. It feels like the people behind it put so much thought to this world and episode and make it legit feel like playing through a fun video game. Though it is a bit detrimental to it since it's so engrossed in being a video game that you forget to bend 10 episodes so much of the time. You get so focused on the cool world in action and suddenly they'll say, we need to get the upgrade icon and you remind yourself, oh yeah, I'm watching a Ben 10 episode. I actually think it's the best trapped in a video game episode, even if it's still admittedly a pretty dumb concept and idea that doesn't belong in the show and it's barely justified. It's objectively one of the silliest and craziest concepts for a Ben 10 episode that is very dumb, but it's a dumb episode I absolutely love. We're inside Sumo Slammer Smackdown? Cool! Number 2. Bed for a good buddy. I said the game over is how you do a dumb episode right, this is how you do a dumb episode wrong. Remember how I said you can have fun and enjoyable dumb, but also boring and inane dumb? This is the latter. For no reason at all, the Rust Bucket is written to be a piece of junk that barely works despite it being a high-tech battle vehicle for most of the series, but the episode just ignores that for the plot. And we get maybe the worst villains in classic, the road crew, which are just three rednecks with cars. Yes, this is our threat of the episode. No alien bounty hunters, no sorcerers, no crazy mutants, three guys with cars. Like, come on, even take subliminal over these guys. That alone would be the plot pretty dumb, but the fact that these three are treated as legitimate threats is baffling. These guys should be the mooks of someone like Rojo or something, not the main threat antagonist for season four, Ben. The episode goes out of its way to make itself get to runtime by forcing the characters to constantly lose. Ben could literally just defeat these guys in an instinct, but no, you get rip jaws. No, you need Upchuck here who still manages to do absolutely nothing. The rest of the episode is even that good as some of again this ignore the rust bucket has insane weaponry like the car douchebags don't notice, and so make it to a less advanced model to take out a train. Was this a season 1 episode? That's the only way any of this could be excusable. Like the plot doesn't work at all, it's just so stupid and contrived, there's no wonder why people hate it so much. It's so dumb. I mean, Lawrence may be the greatest character of all time, but he can't save this one. That's it! What's new isn't always what's improved. But we need some honorable mentions that weren't quite dumb enough for the list. Under Wraps. I love this episode a lot. This one, I wasn't sure if it should have made it on the list instead of Washington, BC. That's why we thought that it shouldn't since it's only really dumps it randomly as a mummy alien. But if I did that, then I would include virtually every other episode in the Ghost Freak arc, and I can't do that. I guess the farm stuff is kinda dumb and pointless, but it's not too unbelievable in universe and the montage is fun. Besides, it does have a legitimate creepy tone throughout in its atmosphere and how truly freaky the mummy is, and the Corodium concept is very sci-fi. As much as just having a mummy, it's really not that dumb an episode. The Last Lap This one really could've counted as a dumb episode, but in execution, it's not. I mean, it's about Ben dealing with his fear of clowns, finding a mutant circus, and facing an evil clown zombie who steals souls. It's a pretty silly and dumb premise. But it really wasn't dumb in execution, it takes this plot very seriously. It doesn't disregard Ben's phobia as silly, it treats it with respect that Ben really is terrified and breaks down. It's really a character introspection at Ben's insecurities, and when he can't be as brave as he thinks, finally puts to face the ultimate manifestation of his fears. The episode keeps its dark tone throughout, which makes the dumb premise feels less dumb and I couldn't really put on the list. You want to see something real? The Big Tick. This is another episode with a silly idea, but its execution doesn't make it feel as dumb as it could have. A random giant freaking tick lands in Yellowstone as it will literally drain the earth and destroy it as it also formed a cult worshipping it as a god. Yeah, it's pretty out there. But the episode does take it seriously as a threat, and it feels like an insurmountable challenge as Ben has no way to actually stop the thing before finally using Cannibal for the first time, which is just the thing to kill it. And admittedly, they said they take destroyed Cannibal's plans that doesn't make sense, but it's something itself too seriously to actually feel dumb. But now for the dumbest episode of Ben 10 Classic. Come on, you all know what it is. Merry Christmas. This is not an episode, this is a festive acid trip. This episode is infamous for making absolutely no sense and being bonkers. I actually did a full review on it last Christmas, so check it out here for more info. But yeah, nothing in this episode is explained or elaborated on. Episodes can have dumb premises, but maintain internal logic that makes sense in the plot, like don't drink the water and game over. Which functions inside of the rules they introduce, so you can still follow them and helps your suspension of disbelief. Merry Christmas does none of that, and continually changes up things and makes new plot points that are never elaborated on. 
Out of nowhere, the trio stumble upon some weird Christmas dimension in the middle of Death Valley, where Max is taken by a demented elf man named Mr. Jingles, thinking he's Santa, and commands a group of real elves, where it's reveals that this is all by some weird curse that turns them into elves, and then Ben and Gwen turn into elves, as they are saved by another good elf named Elvesgood, and this is a crazy time loop thing, and go through the random cameras and finding Christmas monsters inside the jingler that makes everything magical. What is this? I'm not kidding. Nothing about this is explained at all. And this is a trip and nothing about this plot connects. It's pure Christmas magic. And it can see that Dumber's a jingler is a weird Mario platform and is also played to be scientific. That thing has absolutely no origin whatsoever. And then at the new Christmas has stopped the curse and just breaks the show's logic completely. I can't even explain how stupid and in this episode is. You really need to watch it for yourself to get the full dose of Christmas magic. I challenge anyone to actually explain what happened in this episode because it is so dumb, so inane, so badly explained and put together that it is the undisputed winner of the dumbest Ben 10 Classic episode. It's so bonkers and stupid that I actually end up loving it. It's a terrible episode, but it's so much fun. And yeah, that's pretty much how I feel about Classic. It can be dumb, it can be very dumb, but that's what makes it work so well. It's perfect for its young audience wanting a fantastic adventure. It's a perfect mix of tone, having serious and intense plots and episodes, but can also take a breather to make some really wacky and fun adventures. Again, you can argue that every episode is dumb if you look at it. It's a fantastical sci-fi adventure, and I don't think Bedtime would be nearly as enjoyable if it did have the dumb fun factor. It's a thing that the series has always tried to replicate. Alien Force tried to be much darker and serious, and while it worked for the older fans, a lot of the younger ones, including me, fell off when they didn't enjoy as much as the original, and couldn't get into the new tone and plot. The former Cartoon Network forced them to try and be more like classic. And even then, in Omniverse, as much as I love it, it did feel like it was trying too hard to be like classic at times, and some of it got even dumber at times. And then the reboot was this dumb overload. But classic was really the perfect mix of serious and dumb, making it the ideal adventure series for its young audience and can still go back today. It makes you appreciate having the dumb episodes more than you think. And being kind of dumb really helped it. It's nice to see just how much it did work out for its episodes and how much it didn't. But if I continue, then... Wow, I'm gonna have my work cut out for me. So you want to see more of these. Making a uh, top 10 dumbest episodes of Alien Force or Ultimate Alien. Jesus, if I get the honor, I'm gonna make like a top 20 or something. And I'm just saying it right now, I am not doing the reboot, so don't ask. Eyelids are getting very heavy. You can't make me look. I'll just shut my eyes. Oh, you'll open them. You have to breathe sometime. No, I- Wait! What do my eyes have to do with breathing? 